So in this video, I'm going to do the question with the uh, girl's name that was in the top 10 most popular names the largest number of times, right? So it's a little bit kind of uh, a little bit of a tricky question to even kind of conceive of. So basically the idea is like think about actors. There are sometimes sometimes actors are nominated for the Oscar. They don't always win. So we might like to ask like how many times was each particular actor nominated, right? And that's separate from how many times they won. So we would say like one would be like they were the top actor for that year, whereas nominated means they were in the top five or whatever. Okay, so we are asking who was in the top five, in this case, in the top 10, the most often. Okay, so the way I'll approach this problem is by first decomposing it. So the question is, who was in the top 10 the most times? So I'll kind of decompose the task into saying, okay, so who is in the top 10 for 1880? and 1881, and so on. So for each year, we'll compute the top 10. And then what we'll do is we'll say, well, so how many times was uh, what, whatever are the top names, like Emily, Anna, whatever, uh, uh, in the top 10. So once we have this information, it's easier to get at this, okay? So, okay, so the first thing that I wanna do is, so, that, so the first thing I wanna do is like for each year, who was in the top 10? So I'll modify it further and I'll say, was Emily, for example, in the top 10 for 1880, 1881 and so on. And that is how I'm gonna approach the problem. I'll first compute this, then I'll compute this, then I'll compute this, and then I'll be in a position to answer this. Okay, so I'll do library baby names. And in order to answer this, my goal now is to say, well, I want a column for each name here. with one if name was in the top 10 for the year, year. Okay, so that's what I want. So I wanna do a mutate that's like that. So let's do that. So I'll do baby names. So the first thing I'll do is I'll uh, rename n to num just so that it's not confusing not strictly speaking necessary so what that does is it makes this new data frame with num where before it was n so now i'll get rid of all the male rows because i'm just interested in female names so now what i want to do is i want to say okay so for each year we want to know whether uh, it was uh, the name wasn't the top 10 or not. So clearly I need to group by year So now I have my baby names data frame separated out into all the rows in 1880 all the rows in 1881 and so on so now I'm saying mutate and I want this new column in TT so for in top 10 and now is where kind of the challenge begins. So I want to compute whether, for example, Mary was in the top 10 for the year. So I have my num column and I need to use that in order to figure out whether Mary was in the top 10 or not. So I'll write a function. So what the function is taking, uh, so the function is going to be like that. So I'll call it in top 10 and it'll take the number of births for the particular name and it'll take the sorted numbers for 
for the rest of the year for everyone else, right? So sorted nums would be like 7065, 2604, and so on. It so happens that they're already sorted anyhow. Okay, so what I want to do now is I want to say, okay, so in what case is this number in the top 10 of those? Well, if it's larger or equal than the 10th largest number in sorted nums. So I can do that. So I'll say num is greater or equal than sorted nums. And I'll say length sorted nums Uh, and here I need to figure out what's the ten, uh, what uh, what's the uh, what's what's the one that's at number ten, right? So the largest one is at uh, the largest one is at length sorted nums. So the second larger is at minus one. The third larger is at mi is at minus two. So that means that the tenth largest is at minus nine. Okay. So this is the 10th largest number uh, of sorted nums, and we're assuming that sorted nums is sorted in ascending order. So, okay, so now we have this function. So that means if we have all the numbers for all the births, and we have the number of births for the particular name, for Mary, for example, then we can say, if this is larger, then it is in the top 10. If it's not larger or equal, then it's not in the top 10. Okay. So, okay. So that's a job for S apply now. So we'll say S apply number and the, the function is in top 10. And we'll also supply the sorted version of number. So what's going on here? How is, the, how is that going to work? So what we'll do is we'll say for each group, so for 1880 separately and for 1881 separately and so on, we'll say in top 10, and then we'll say this guy, so this is for Mary, and then we'll give sort numbers, so that's all the numbers. And then we'll do the same for Anna, and then we'll do the same for Emma and so on. So for each one of them, we'll compute whether this is in top 10, this is in top 10, this is in top 10, and so on. Okay. So that's going to give us another column. Let's see how that works. So we have num not found, so it's num. And that is also num. So that's what we get. So here we don't see any falses because we just see the first 10 rows. Uh, so if I assign the result to, for example, A, just kind of for debugging purposes quickly, I can then view A. And what they see is that the top 10 are displayed as in top 10. And then we have a whole bunch of falses. And then you can scroll, and if you find the very beginning of 1990, so maybe we'll find it like that. So we'll say filter year equals 1990. So here you see that Lauren is in top 10. So here again, we just have the first 10, and it so happens that they're sorted by number already. So we can see all the trues. The 11th row here would contain a false. So, okay. So now that we have this kind of thing, we can compute the number of times that each name was in the top 10. The way we would do it is we would just sum up the NTT for those names, right? Why would it do it? It would do it because it, it, it would do it because basically what we want to do is we want to say, if Jessica was true five times, then if we add up the in.tt for Jessica, then the sum of in.tt in rows with Jessica is going to be five. 
So what we need to do is we need to group by name. So now we have a group of rows that's all Jessica, a group of rows that's all Ashley and so on. And then within each group, we need to sum up the entity. So we'll do it. So that's a job for summarize because we're not adding another column, right? We want just kind of one row per Jessica, one row for Ashley, one row for Brittany and so on. And we are adding a new column. So I'll call it like total top 10. And that's gonna be sum of NTT. So because, uh, so if you sum up trues and falses, you just get the number of times that the value was true. So, okay. So now what, so that's gonna be like that. So now we can also arrange by NTT. So what that would do is it would just display the largest as total TT, sorry. So that would display the largest total first. So let's do it. So you see that Mary was in the top 10 92 times and Elizabeth was in top 10 73 times, Mar Margaret was 10 60 times and so on. So here we assigned the result to A. So if we want just the name of uh, 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 the name that was uh, the most frequent, we because it's already arranged, we could say a dollar name at one because it's arranged and we save the result in A. And we'll get Mary, which is what we wanted.